Welcome to Toast Ranks, the show where I, Toaster Party, talk about how I rank different things. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 most disappointing archetypes for Master Rule 4. There were a lot of hyped archetypes in Master Rule 4. Several of them lived up to their hype, such as Thunder Dragons and Salamangrate, while others took a little while before they did anything good, such as Dragon Link. Some decks didn't do anything under Master Rule 4. And today I'm going to be looking at a few different archetypes that were released or given copious amounts of support during the Master Rule 4 era and didn't really do anything with it. That's not to say that these decks are completely terrible. In fact, a small number of these decks on this list actually got additional support in Master Rule 5 that has brought them up to competent rogue deck status. Well, without further ado, let's start off with number 10, Generator. First on our list is a deck that actually has started to do something recently in what equates to the competitive scene during virus time. Generator was pretty hyped uh, archetype coming out of Mystic Fighters and definitely showed a lot of promise with its intriguing boss rush theme and powerful field spell. The problem was that in Master Rule 4, generators had big monsters but couldn't actually do anything to, with them because when your deck mostly consisted of level 9s and a very limited way to go into them, then the deck has had a lot of problems with breaking a lot. The other issue that the deck faced was that the deck didn't have its best boss monster, Har, and when you're a deck that's all about boss monsters, that's a pretty big glaring flaw. Now the deck has more support and that's not as big of an issue, but for the entirety of its Master Rule 4 run, this boss battle deck just got rushed by in favor of other better decks. Let's move on to number 9, World Chalice. But it won a YCS! Sadly, this YCS winning deck didn't see much competitive success after it won YCS Bochum. Despite having good starter cards and great end boards, the deck telegraphs its choke points, which are many. A single well-placed effect failure can force a pass from this deck. The deck's other issue is that despite getting a good amount of support and really strong support, the support is often just used in better decks. A great example of this is Ib the World Chalice Justice Shar, which due to its ability to be used in other decks, got it banned. I really enjoy World Chalice, but the deck just wasn't good enough to keep up with the slew of better Link Spam decks that came out after it. It might have been farther down on this list, but once in a blue moon, this deck still will top of regionals. With that, let's move on to number 8, Pure Cybers. First things first, I apologize for the background of this video just being a Link Infra Flyer. I haven't had access to internet in a while, so this was the best image that I had on my computer for this background. Despite being a main character's archetype, the only cards that have seen play have been the generic extra deck monsters and whatever pieces were good enough to be played in Salamangrate. While well, having, well, the deck has several good extenders, it doesn't extend into anything worthwhile. And even though this deck has continued to get support even till this day, the deck has still seen no competitive success. What are three different types of code talkers going to do against having a Nibiru dropped on them? The answer is sadly very little. But let's move on to number seven, Unchained. This is a deck that saw a lot of hype from True Draco players when the cards were announced. They said that this was going to be a crazy good engine for this deck. The problem is that Unchained True Draco never really panned out. Unchained is an archetype that cares a lot about popping its own cards in hopes of gaining searches and special summons from the deck. Another theme of the deck is to use your opponent's cards to climb the link ladder. The problems with this lie in the fact that the archetype has no backbone whatsoever. If the deck can't pop its own pieces, then it's dead in the water. The link climb feature of the deck only works for with the link two on, or only really works with the link two. Well, the link three doesn't do it insanely well. And the other issue is that popping your own cards will run you out of cards very quickly, and without any ability to build boards, this deck dies pretty quickly. 
any control deck worth its salt will kick this deck in the tail, and any combo deck can probably play through around the Link 2's Link Climb effect. As for the deck's splash ability, while the deck can be splashed into other archetypes, the archetypes that can use it are either better off without it, or just aren't very powerful to begin with. But with that, let's move on to number 6, TG. Sometimes when older archetypes receives new support and gets cards off the ban list, it finds its way back to relevancy. Across got most of its pieces off the ban list and also got new support in the form of the incantations and extravagance, and it worked its way to becoming a competent rogue deck. TG received a lot of support, and some people were excited to spit out three hyper librarians when that was legal, and draw a ton of cards. This deck has a lot of cards that were put into the secret rare slots of core sets with the new support, and some of the support cards that the deck got were good for this strategy. Screw Serpent, Trident Launcher, and Star Guardian are all very good extenders for this deck. And a good number of people were hyping up this deck as being able to make crazy plays. The problem is, this deck hasn't topped yet. Because the deck's big play doesn't make a very good board. The thing was, the deck's hype died down almost immediately after Savage Strike was released, but the deck has still gotten waves upon waves of support and still hasn't done anything. The biggest issue with this deck is that you couldn't synchro spam in Masterful 4, and that even if you could, then you're still facing the issue that the boss monsters are stuck back in the early 2010s. But even with Masterful 5 and getting the Chris Strawn, formerly known as Needle Fiber, I doubt this deck will really ever start doing anything anytime soon. And sadly, that leaves me stuck with a binder full of a lot of useless cards. But let's move on to number 5, Evil Eye. Infinity Chasers was a particularly poor deck builder set. The three decks that were in the set were Infinitrack, Witchcrafter, and Evil Eye. And out of all of the decks in Infinity Chasers, this one has probably seen the most tops out of any of them. But maybe clo tied with Infinitrack, but... Infinitrack didn't really see much hype in the fact that it actually has started seeing some splash play and other strategies is actually a pleasant surprise. But the reason this one made its way onto the list is that people thought this was going to be meta. Almost all of this deck's tops are in conjunction with other decks like True Draco, with Evil Eye being used as a side engine. The gimmick of this archetype was that the spells become stronger well, spells and traps become strong when you have the equip spell Evil Eye of Selene on the field. And while the equip spell is fine as far as equip spells go, most of the back row in the archetype is very underwhelming if the equip spell doesn't stick, or doesn't actually get any better even if it does stick. The other problem is that Serziel is the only good monster in the main deck. Without it, then the deck can't make plays. A similar deck, Subterror, is heavily reliant on a single monster, namely Guru. But the main reason why Subterra works and Evil Eye didn't was that Subterra has a better supporting cast of cards around it to stay in the game. This deck made it so far down the list because it has a lot of potential, but it just never reached the level of being better relevant. If this deck does continue to receive support, it might make its way up to relevant control deck, but as of right now, it sure hasn't been one. But let's move on to number 4, Dragon Maid. Here's another deck on this list that has finally started to make its way towards competent rogue option. As it recently topped an online tournament, I think taking the second place spot. The theme of this deck is that the low level monsters are supposed to transform into their high level counterparts by special summoning the high level dragons for hand or graveyard, and then bouncing the low level ones back to hand. Initially, when this deck was released, the option for it was Bad Version of Dragon Link and Special Summon House Dragon Maid Pass. Recently, the deck has taken to imitating Salamangrate, and instead of it makes a board of minimal negations and opting to instead try winning a card advantage war by using the tag effect of the maids to always have a good normal summon in hand. When the initial cards were spoiled, 
I thought that this archetype was just completely unplayable. I had a friend who kept telling me that this deck was going to be meta, and I stand by my statement that this deck was terrible on release. There were two main problems in Master Rule 4 that were holding this deck back. One, it was inconsistent, and two, House is a terrible boss monster. Problem 1 got solved with the release of Chamber, which gave the deck a third good normal summon. And Problem 2 got solved with the release of Xiao, which gave the deck a boss monster that's actually worth playing. This deck is as far down this list because how bad the deck was in Master Rule 4 with, because it had none of that support. Because it had, and also because it had any competitive hype at all. Because on release, this deck had an insanely high price point, probably not just all due to the people wanting to play the deck, but at the same point, the fact that this had any hype at all on release is pretty embarrassing. But I'm glad to see that another deck is starting to make its way towards being more playable. And it helps by making people have an actual reason to have this deck be as expensive as it is, as opposed to it just being an anime girl deck. But speaking of anime girl decks, let's talk about the one that hasn't really moved towards competent rogue strategy, Witchcrafter. When the archetype isn't even good enough on Duel Links, then you know something has probably gone wrong. The problems with this archetype in both formats is that it's pretty much the same. You run out of cards in hand, and running out of cards in hand is only good for Infernity. The way this archetype is supposed to work is that the small crafters tribute themselves and discard a spell card to summon any witchcrafter from deck, and the small ones all have floating effects. That a... The small ones are usually being used to summon themselves or summon the big witchcrafters from deck, and all of the boss monsters require the discard of spell cards to activate their effects. The two boss monsters of note are Hain and Vare. Hain is a pseudo Dryadent, and Vare affect Veilers the entire opponent's field. The last aspect of the deck is that the spell cards all can return from graveyard to hand at the end phase if you hadn't activated that card that turn. The problem is is that the deck's engine is a real gas guzzler, without any real payoff. The only quality spells in the deck are the Search spell, an in-archetype monster reborn, and a back row of removal piece that pops equal to the number of witchcrafters you control. The rest of the cards do such wonderful things like have one witchcrafter attack twice a turn, and special summon a witchcrafter from hand. The problem is that you have to play some of the bad witchcrafter spells to be able to resolve the monster's effects. Another problem is that you're going to get empty handed really quick. The deck also breaks extremely hard. If you don't open a witchcrafter monster and a spell, then you literally can't do anything. And the problem is you can't actually run many of the monsters or else you won't draw enough of the spells to discard. To make this deck actually work, it either needs a lot more good spells, or monsters that don't force you to go negative on card advantage, or have the ability to build any sort of board presence. And for a deck that people were comparing to Sky Striker, this deck has definitely not seen the same level of success. But let's move on to number 2, Fire Fist of 2019. This is another old archetype that received additional support like TG. But unlike TG, this archetype had a lot more hype behind it than TG because Konami had an actual video showcasing a two-card combo that was supposed to end on several disruptions. Fire Fist wore the frontrunner of the Fist of the Gadget supplemental set. The set gets released, prices are sky high for Fire Fist cards, and then... nothing. Konami themselves hyped up this archetype and it saw no competitive success. The problem was that despite showcasing a combo, the deck has to open with said combo and also has to be able to play through hand traps. 
two things this deck doesn't actually do well. From what I have seen, this deck is very prone to bricking, and something that the video didn't discuss. The next time Konami makes a video hyping up an archetype, I hope they make sure to test it before trying to focus an entire supplemental set around it. But with that disappointment out of the way, let's move to the last item on our list, Marincess. If there was one deck that I can remember being super hyped up in Master Rule 4 that flopped so hard, that deck would be Marincess. The deck has some very solid cards in the archetype, specifically Blue Tang and Marincess Wave. Blue Tang is a combination of Salaman, Great Foxy, and Gazelle, and Wave is a flexible infinite impermanence. The deck can extend its, with its link monsters, so, um, which can be used to summon more monsters. And while the deck can extend, the problem is that this deck, like Pure Cybers, doesn't extend into anything great. The deck's several extenders lock the deck into either water monsters or into just plain Marincess. So the deck's end boards tend to be just one big Marincess boss monster with minimal protection. A board that pretty much any meta deck can easily out. The end board is a far cry from the multi-negate boards with Totally Awesome that people were expecting. And the reason that this is number one on the list is because out of all the hype decks for Master Rule 4, Marincess was the one that continued to see hype. People were hoping that the support would make it a good deck. And currently it has seen several waves uh -huh, of support and people still haven't made this deck work. Well, that's all for today. Comment down below which archetypes disappointed you in Master Rule 4. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day.